All right, welcome to the lab videos. I would love to say something like, welcome to the lab video series. All right, the very first video is going to be covering heart anatomy. This is the outline that is posted on the lab page. It does start out here with blood flow through the heart. And then a few other things. Uh, we usually cover uh, some of the physiology stuff in lab with this section. So I'm going to start here first. This is exactly like the section that was in lecture uh, as far as pathway of blood to the heart. <clears throat> and then we'll get to the heart anatomy. So I'm going to use, this is the uh, PowerPoint from lecture, but it works really good. So these represent systemic body-wide tissues. Here is the left and right lungs, and there's the heart. So if you listen to the lecture video, you're going to hear the same thing. All right, this big vessel on the top, this is called the superior vena cava. This one on the bottom is the inferior vena cava. So blood that's gone through the body, it has a blue color, it's low on oxygen, it's high in carbon dioxide, and the reason it's blue is the whole deoxyhemoglobin. And it's got low oxygen because it's traveled through the tissues, it unloaded most of the oxygen, it's coming back to the heart to be pumped to the lungs. So blood from the right, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava dump in the right atrium. The right atrium contracts, pushes blood through the tricuspid valve, which is supposed to be a little thing right there, and pushes it down to the bottom of the heart in the right ventricle. The right ventricle contracts, opens the pulmonary valve with all the pressure, and it pushes blood. This is called the pulmonary trunk. This is the left pulmonary artery. This is the right. It is an artery. It is blue. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Okay, the blood goes through the lungs here. You can see it's unloading carbon dioxide. It's picking up oxygen. That's why it's getting this red color on each side. The blood goes through the capillaries in the lungs. It travels back to the heart along the pulmonary veins, these two little red veins. They dump in the left atrium. When they contract, they force the bicuspid valve open or mitral valve and blood goes down into the left ventricle. Now the wall of the left ventricle is really thick because it's got to push it through the whole body, so it's got more muscle. When the left ventricle contracts, it forces the aortic valve open and it pushes blood through the aorta. And this goes down to the lower extremities and this is the upper extremities. So the term for that is the blood has gone systemic. It means body wide. And there you see as it crosses the tissues, it unloads oxygen and it's going to come back and go on the right side. So it's a vicious cycle. So that is blood flow through the heart. When you're studying for your lab exam, if blood is in the right atrium, where is it going to go next? Well, it's going to the right ventricle. Where does it go from the right ventricle? It goes through the uh, pulmonary arteries right here. See? Blood taken from the heart to the lung along the pulmonary arteries. If it's in the left atrium, where is it going next? To the left ventricle. Where does it go from the left ventricle? Here. It's going to go through the aortic valve, through the aorta. Blood does not flow into a valve. Valves are there to keep blood flowing one direction and not backing up. And here's a nice little summary. That whole process is blood flow through the heart. See, there's the vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery or trunk, lungs, pulmonary veins, left atrium, left ventricle, and then the aorta and then systemic circulation. Okay, we did this also in um, lecture. This is the electrical conduction system of the heart. Now in lab class, you do have to know the waves of an ECG. So we'll get to that in another video. So there are five things here you want to be familiar with. The sinoatrial node, the pacemaker, the SA node, the atrioventricular node, or AV node, which is in the floor of the right atrium. This is in the upper right atrium. These are all bundles of nerve tissue and they send out a signal. The SA node has the fastest rate of depolarization. That's why it's called the pacemaker. It sets heart rate. You have the bundle of his, the bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. Now this is a, I, I love this diagram. It's a, it's a great diagram. 
it's labeled here for you. Here's the SA node. Here's the AV node. There's the bundle of his. There's the left bundle branch, the right bundle branch, and then up under here are the Bakenji fibers. So the signal starts up here and it's connected over here and also here. And the signal travels very quickly down to the AV node. It slows down going through the bundle of his just, just momentarily. And then it goes very quickly up each side. This is called the electrical conduction system of the heart. And an electrocardiogram is looking at that little pathway right there. It is um, an indication of how healthy the heart is, but it's, it's just looking at that little electrical pathway. So, <clears throat> okay, now heart sounds. I actually gave you and I should have pulled it up. Um, yes, and I don't want to start this video over, so bear with me here. I did change up a little bit. You'll see that in the intro, or you saw that in the intro video. I'm trying to make things a little easier to find so the pages aren't a mile long. So there's the videos, but here where it has outlines and study diagrams for lab, down here is the diagram for heart sounds. The lub dub, uh, thump thump of the heart. The heart has two sounds to it. The first sound is closure of these, what are called the AV valves, the atrioventricular valves, the tricuspid and the bicuspid, just like it says right there, mitral valves. That's the first sound, first of the heart sounds. It's the beginning of the cardiac cycle. The second sound it comes from when the blood has left the heart, when the ventricles have contracted, and it's closure of the pulmonary and the aortic valves. I know that says pulmonic, but I just I like this little diagram. That is the second sound that is heard. So first sound, closure of the AV valves. Second sound, uh, closure of what are called the semilunar valves. Okay, and so there it is, the lub, the AV valves close. That occurs at the beginning of what is called ventricular systole when the ventricles are contracting. The second sound occurs when the blood has left the heart, and so it's during what is called ventricular diastole when the heart's relaxing, and um, the semilunar valves are closing to keep blood from dumping back into the heart. Okay, electrocardiogram or... ECG. Um, say I don't want to start. Oops, I don't know. What, uh, um, I exited out the ones that I wanted there. So, here we go. I have given you this page. This is something you can look at. Um. This is, uh, it'll be under the outlines and diagrams tab, but here is, a uh, here's the heart. Now, electrocardiogram, I am going to do that. Boy, I'm doing this just like I would in lecture. Let's just look at a picture. The lab video, I showed you a video and, you know, this is actually you see this lead here, here's the left wrist, right wrist, left leg, and then this one they actually have the right leg hooked up. But uh, what happens is you can, where's a picture of, well there's the machine. See this little machine with the readout? This might actually be the paper part of it. Here's a person wearing leads. What you do is you, you put these on, this is a 12 lead, they all hook up to this machine which is able to detect electrical impulses from the heart. It can filter out all the other uh, muscle contractions and things so you can just focus on that. And the little readout will come up here and each contraction of the heart registers as a series of waves. So there's a mannequin. So there's a little machine. There it's hooked up. So um, one more picture. See here's um, it says a nurse monitoring EKG procedure. There's the paper coming out. There are the there's the heart rhythms, and then see that person's hooked up right here. Okay, so going back to um, going back to our diagram here. So electrocardiograph, 
uh, ECG, I had mentioned this, the person that came up with the theory behind this entire machine was a German, and in German you spell cardiac with a K, so it's called an EKG in honor of that person a lot of times, medicine honors tradition. This is actually what a real life one would look like, and you have to get the person's skin clean, you kind of rough it up a little bit to keep it from getting really blurry, they call that artifact. But here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight heartbeats on this particular strip. There's a little P wave, uh, small Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. Each wave represents a part of the cardiac cycle. So what is called a P wave? this guy right there so the beginning of the cardiac cycle this would be the beginning of a heartbeat when the heart contracts and you're hooked up to an electrocardiograph that first part of the heart contraction registers as a p wave it represents what is called atrial depolarization so on here see here are the left atrium right atrium when they contract they generate electrical activity, hence the conduction system, and it's going to register as this little P wave. So this is the part that's in your, your notes as well. So that's the very first wave of the cardiac cycle. Now, the QRS complex, it's actually, those are three separate waves, but it's called the QRS complex. Uh, going down here, you see there's a Q, really small, R, there's an S. This represents when the ventricles are contracting. Just like it says here, results from ventricular depolarization and precedes ventricular contraction. When the ventricles contract, they have a lot of muscle mass, so they make big deflections on the paper here. So that registers as, see, that's a, there's the atria. They're not that big. The ventricles are really big. So that's a Q wave, an R wave, and an S wave. Be able to identify those and then also know what, is, what does it mean? What, what is going on with the QRS? It's, it's called, it's the de depolarization of the ventricles. Ventricular depolarization. Depolarization means they're contracting. Now, the last wave in this heartbeat is this T wave. And, um, it's a result of the ventricles repolarizing. Muscles that depolarize, they have to repolarize again. If they don't repolarize after that T, well, this T wave wouldn't show up, and it would be a flat line, and then that would be trouble. So, um, yeah, so anyway, there's the T wave. See, here's the left ventricular wall. It's got a lot of muscle mass. The right ventricular wall, not quite as much. But uh, here's a blank diagram. <clears throat> so here's a P wave. Here's the Q, here's the R, here's the S, and there's the T. P wave, Q, R, S, T. So there's two heartbeats on that strip right there. And then this is the diagram that's in your outline. So it's all labeled. And this is gonna be the one that's used for your exam. So first thing here, P wave represents atrial depolarization here q wave represents well this all three of these there's a q there's an r and there's an s the qrs represents ventricular depolarization and then this here is a t wave and that represents ventricular repolarization the atria are also muscle. They have to repolarize. That, that occurs um, during um, when the ventricles are contracting, so you can't see it. Okay, so thanks for joining me with this uh, with our EKG video.